Hello, I'm Dr. Alan Watkins, and I'm the CEO of Complete Coherence and the author of Coherence, The Secret Science of Brilliant Leadership. And I'd like to talk to you today about the single most important thing I believe you could ever learn about personal development. I've been studying this field for more than 30 years, and I want to share with you the one thing I think is most important to you if you learn absolutely nothing else, if you read a thousand books on performance and leadership, like unfortunately I've done, what is the one thing that you really have to know? And I'm going to share that with you. In fact, it's this thing that caused me to leave my previous profession. Originally, I trained as a physician. I spent 11 years working on the wards and in general practice and in pharmaceutical medicine in pretty much every frontline trench around the world, in the UK, in Australia, and in the US, looking after patients and people who were suffering in one way or another. And I often thought whether, am I really making a difference? Am I making the kind of difference I really want to make to people? And of all these things I'm learning, of all the different things you get to understand about being a physician, and ultimately a scientist, and ultimately a neuroscientist, if I could just share one thing with you, what would that one thing be? And that's what I want to talk to you about right now. In fact, I often thought, what is the one thing if I was to share with my children, and if you were to share with your children or your loved ones, if you could just teach them one thing and nothing else, what would it be? And it isn't eat an apple. It isn't avoid the doctor. It isn't any of those things. I believe the single most important thing in the whole field of personal development, from that starting point of complete ignorance to enlightenment, is this one thing about ownership. Ownership. What that really means is taking back the ownership for what happens to you. One of the things I experienced time and again on the wards is I'd see people suffering and people living their lives as though it was happening to them. Stuff was occurring. They were out of control. They were sort of a, a, a boat in the ocean, bobbing around on the waves and being tossed this way and that way. Things were happening to them. And they didn't feel that they could control the destiny of their lives. They could control the outcome of their life. So let me give you a specific example, particularly in relation to emotions. Most people's experience as they go through their life is that emotions are happening to them. Other people are making them feel bad. You did it to me. You made me feel bad. And of course, it really feels like that. And it feels like that because we don't own our own emotions. And if we don't own our own emotions, people do it to us. So we'll often point the finger at other people. You made me feel bad. And as that old adage says, remember, if you're pointing the finger at somebody else, three fingers are pointing at you. And I taught my kids that. And my kids now point at me like that. You, you did it to me, Dad. Just to sort of uh, have a bit of fun. But there's an important point here, which is until you take control of your own emotions, people can make you feel anything. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can take this back. In fact, you can become so masterful of your own emotional state and of your own life that you can change the destiny, you can change the outcome. But until you accept that fundamental truth, you're basically a victim. You're a victim of other people. You're a victim of circumstance. You're a victim of letters coming through the letterbox, of emails coming into your inbox of conversations, of anything outside of yourself. You have to take that step. You have to take that step of ownership. And it's a developmental step. A lot of people don't even realize there's a step to be taken. So they go through their lives with things happening to them and they're not quite sure why these things happen. Sometimes they call it chance or luck or whatever. And then occasionally, if they're lucky, they start to wonder about why is this all happening? And unfortunately, it's usually in situations of pain or suffering. When things get particularly bad, they start to wonder, why is this happening to me? 
What's this all about? What is the meaning of all of this? So most people go through their lives never asking these questions. But if they're lucky, these questions start to surface. And usually for most people, this kind of question doesn't surface until you're sort of 35 or more. Why is this happening? What's going on? It's usually when we start to encounter our first divorce or our first loss of a job or uh, our first breakdown of some sort. Maybe we've lost a, a close member of the family, a death, a bereavement, some kind of pain. And people start to wonder why it's happening. This is what we call a question of meaning. What's going on? What's the point? I thought I was doing all the things that I really ought to be doing, but I'm still suffering in some way. Why is that? And in that pain, in that painful moment, people often get lost. They get lost in the pain because the pain heats up and they look for somebody to blame. It's you. It's your fault. You're doing it to me. It's my boss. It's my colleagues. It's my spouse. It's somebody other than me in this mistaken belief that if I can put the blame elsewhere, somewhere else in the world, then it's not my fault. But there's a trap. There's a trap that if I put that blame elsewhere, I put myself on the hook. I am a victim of somebody else and my life will never change. It will never change as long as I see the cause of my problem outside of myself. It's somewhere out there. And the single most transformative moment in all human beings' lives is when the penny drops. When people start to realize, it's my suffering, it's my pain, it's my anger, it's my frustration. I did a program for the BBC a few years ago called Temper Your Temper. And I worked with 10 really angry people live on camera. And the single thing I taught them first of all is nobody's making you feel angry. Nobody's doing this to you. Nobody creeps up behind you and injects you with the chemistry of anger. It just happens. But who's causing that chemical response in you? Who's causing those electrical charges to go around you? Who's causing the blood pressure to rise? You are. That other person isn't doing it to you. Granted, they may be behaving badly, but who's creating the chemistry? You are. And if you can simply accept that truth, your life can change forever. Because if you can realize that you're doing it, you're doing it, nobody else, hang on a minute, if I'm doing it, maybe I can undo it. Bingo. That's the point. That's the point where we start to transform our lives. When we start to take back ownership, we moved from ignorance into that painful moment of disease of meaning, as I call it, into that sort of suffering and somebody looking, somebody's at fault, I need to blame somebody until we realize it's down to me, I can change this. And if I can change this, I can change my life. I don't have to feel angry. I don't have to suffer. So what I'm really saying to you is you don't have to feel anything you don't want to feel. You don't have to feel angry or frustrated or disappointed. Misery is optional. You don't have to feel that ever again. Anxiety, depression. But the only way you get to be able to change and transform your life is you take back the ownership. You take that step. You cross the threshold as Joseph Campbell talks about it. Now, Joseph Campbell, one of my great heroes, in fact, one of my sons is named after him as a professor of comparative religion. He's the guy that um, inspired George Lucas to some extent to make Star Wars. He wrote about what's called the hero's journey. And he defined these pre-developmental stages, these steps on all of our journey, on the journey of life, if you will. And it imbues many great movies like Star Wars. And there's a moment where we cross the threshold, where we actually start to take ownership of our lives, where we start to become the director of our lives rather than a bit player being bobbed along in the ocean 
at the mercy of the tides of luck and circumstance and environment and each other. We start to put a mast up, put a sail up, put a rudder in and direct our lives. And it's ownership that makes the difference. So if we own how we feel, if we own how we think, if we own how we behave, we can start to change all of that. We really can change how we think, how we feel, and how we behave. In fact, I go so far to say that that's the only thing we can change. I can't change you. You can't change me. I can influence you. You may be able to influence me. But the only thing I absolutely can change is right here. So if you want to change your life in whatever way you want to change your life, it starts right here with you. Those are the only three levers you've actually got in your life. If you want to change anything that's happening in your life, you have to change how you think, how you feel, or how you behave. It's one of those three things. And what's very interesting is if you change one of those three things, if you change how you feel about another person, it often changes how they feel about you. If you change how you think about a problem, it will often change your response to the problem. And clearly, if you change what you're doing, you'll often get a different outcome. So the transformation of your life starts with the realization. And that realization occurs in one moment. It's that fast. I can change it. I can change it. I can change any of this. I can change my thinking. I can change my feeling. I can change what I do. And if you realize that, you move out of victimhood. You move out and away from those ideas of, oh, this won't work. It can't happen to me. It's not that easy. I won't bother reading anything about this. I won't bother investing any time or any money. I won't try and study or read it. I won't, I can't, I shan't, I wouldn't. It's a self-fulfilling victim prophecy. You're basically keeping yourself stuck in the role of the victim. And your life will never get better. There may be temporary moments of improvement, but you'll never learn to be brilliant every day until you take the ownership until you start to change how you think, how you feel, and how you behave. And you really can do it. I've done it myself. I learned this lesson at a very early age. In fact, one of the reasons I do the work that I do is I've had some terrible things happen to me, and I've witnessed some terrible things happen to other people. One of the great things about being trained as a physician is you see human suffering up close and personal on a daily basis. And one of the things I noticed is I would have been in the room right at that moment when people have died, before my very eyes. I've been there. I've seen that, as have many of my medical colleagues. And I always found it fascinating that it's a profound moment when you see somebody die, when their vitality and their last breath slips away. It's a profound moment. And I stood in the room on many occasions when that happened with colleagues of mine. And when that moment happened, I had to stand there for a while and just digest what had taken place. And many of my colleagues would go, oh, he's dead, lunch. And they would just leave the room straight away. And this baffled me for many, many, many years. How, how can that be? How can two human beings go through the same experience and for one person, it's a profound moment. And for another person, it's just something that happened. How is that even possible? And one of the things that occurred to me was we have to pay attention. We have to start to look at what's going on with us and our life. What's the meaning of these experiences? What are we learning? Are we making progress? Are we developing? Are we taking ownership? So many people go through their lives not really developing that awareness, not really thinking about what's going on. They just plow on, doing whatever they're doing, 
And they're, I'm not saying they're not doing great stuff. Some of these doctors and some of my colleagues, they're all doing great work. But how much are we developing as human beings? How much are we really progressing? How much are we learning from those moments? I've seen many patients who've had terrible things happen to them. People who've been the victims of abuse when they were children. And it's caused them tremendous pain and suffering. And you see them when they're 40 and 50 and 60 and they're still suffering from something that happened 20, 30, 40 years ago. They've never overcome it. They've never truly healed from some of those terrible things that happened to them. And in fact, when you go around and talk to pretty much everybody, in my experience, everybody's had something happen to them. Everybody's had something to deal with. Some terrible things, some less terrible things. But what's most interesting is who's overcome it. Who's changed? Who's healed from that suffering? And I can tell you, those people who've truly healed, who've truly gone beyond that early life suffering, that early pain, are those that were paying attention, those who thought about what had happened, those who reflected on what had gone on, and those who learnt, those who learnt to take ownership, to not have the rest of their life be dominated by something that happened to them at an early age. The rest of their life be defined by something that happened to them. And you can see this in small or large ways. People who were made to feel insecure, not out of the maliciousness of their parents or their relatives, usually out of uh, an inability to uh, guide. But something happened to them and they became anxious or nervous or frustrated or angry people. And then that stays with them for a very long time. It defines who they are for the rest of their life. And what I'd like to share with you is you can change that. You can change all of that. It starts with the realization, the awareness that you can change it. That you can change how you feel about yourself, about other people, about situations, about life. You can control any of your emotions. You can control your thinking. You can certainly control what you do. Now the truth of it is that most people can't because they don't know how to. They don't know how to do any of that. Largely because nobody's ever taught them. In fact, most people didn't even realize it's possible. I've had people say to me, so are you truly saying I don't have to feel anything I don't want to feel? Absolutely, that's exactly what I'm saying to you. Are you saying to me I don't have to feel frustrated or angry? That's exactly what I'm saying to you. So I can just feel delighted and happy and cheerful every day? Is that what you're saying to me? That's exactly what I'm saying to you. And then they go, is that legal? Yes, it is. And it's free. Right here. The realization that you can do this. I did it myself. You can do it. And in fact, it's the single most important realization on the entirety of personal development. That moment where you make the choice to take back your life, to take ownership of all aspects of your life, how you think, how you feel, how you behave. And you start to direct it. You start to determine how you think, how you feel, how you behave. You choose. You decide that. Now, I'm not saying that's easy. This takes a lot of practice. But until that penny drops, that you can change it, you stay stuck in victimhood. Stuck right there, and it will never really improve. You may have moments or nights out that are kind of enjoyable, but the suffering and the pain comes back. That sense of victimhood and people doing it to me comes back again. But when you truly cross the threshold, when you truly realize all of this is down to you, how you feel, how you think, how you behave, down to you, it changes. It changes everything. Unfortunately, I can't go through my life blaming other people for how I feel because I truly know it's down to me. And even when I forget and I want to slip into pointing the finger at other people, of course, my kids pick me up on it. 
And oftentimes I have to pick myself up. That you know what? Actually, if I feel bad, it's because I've created that. But also, if I feel great, it's I've created that too. So that's the moment that makes the real difference. That's the thing that will make the biggest difference to your life. And if you want to learn some more details about how do you take the step-by-step -step ways, we've created an audio program for you of six audio files, which gives you much more detail of how to do this on a daily basis. How do you practice this day by day by day until it becomes the way that you are? until it seeps through every aspect of who you are. And I can tell you from personal experience, from my own life, and from those who've actually done this for themselves, their experience themselves is completely different. They feel like different people. They feel like they've suddenly got this power, that they've suddenly got this clarity, this awareness, this control of what's happening to them, that they're no longer at the mercy of other people. Now that doesn't mean to say that they're immune to other people. In fact, one of the paradoxical interesting things about this process is you become more sensitive to others, but less troubled by them. You become much more sensitive to those around you. You can feel what's happening with other people much more effectively, but it doesn't trouble you in the same way. You can tune in and help and guide others but you're not sobbing in their beer with them. You're not sobbing and crying with them. You can engage with compassion rather than sob with sympathy. That's what's possible for you. And I would really urge you to buy the audio program. Learn these lessons to transform your own life. To make a real difference to yourself, first and foremost, that's your primary responsibility. Your primary responsibility is not anybody else, not your kids, not your family, not your partner, it's you. Your primary responsibility is towards yourself because that's the only thing you can really change. And if you take that responsibility and learn to control how you respond to the world, you become response-able able to respond. Rather than react to the world in a reactive way, you're now able to respond to the world in a much more effective way. So I would encourage you dearly to step out of victimhood. Step out of the can't, shouldn't, wouldn't, couldn't mentality. This won't work for me. I've tried this before. All of that type of thinking. And start to practice the daily lessons those daily lessons of being response-able. And discover the joy of becoming a response-able human being. And it will make a dramatic difference to you. It will make a dramatic difference to those around you. And I've seen it transform so many people's lives. And I really hope for you it can transform yours too. Now, I've told you a little bit about my story and the dramatic difference this made to me, I'd really love to hear a bit about yours. So send us a video clip, post a comment on this site. I'd love to start a movement where we all start to share our stories with each other about the moment we crossed that threshold, the moment our life changed, the moment we realized I could make this different. I don't have to feel this way. I don't have to let the past determine the future. I've taken back the control of my life. I'd really love to hear your stories. So please feel free to share them with us as I've shared mine with you.